Valorante Child Game. Wait, no, I take it back. Valorante Child Game. Since the release of Counter Strike 2, most of the community were only giving negative feedback about the game. And then an interesting idea came to my mind. Why don't we take Valorant and CS2 and make a direct comparison? As a CS2 player with 15,000 hours, you might think that my opinion could be biased, but I promise to you that everything you will hear in this video will be straight facts and lots of hours of research. And I don't want to hear any NPCs cry, okay? CS2 is out of beta, it's an official released game, so I have the the right to compare both released games in its current state. This video will be divided in sections where I will be comparing each important part of both games and then giving a point to whoever did the job better. And we're gonna start with tick rate. In CS2 we currently have a sub tick system while Valorant has 128 tick rate. Majority of CS2 community thinks that sub tick has ruined CS2. They try to get rid of 64 tick rate and make something better than 128. But they messed up a lot and now the tick rate in CS2 is super random. Them. Sometimes you hit shots that were not supposed to go in and sometimes it goes the opposite way. While in Valorant there is 128 tick rate on every server in every game mode, even in your practice range. Official competitive matchmaking, deathmatch, unranked and all other game modes have the same tick rate, so there is always a good registration of your shots and you can't blame the tick rate on your internet, so if you whiff it's your fault and your responsibility. I've asked some high-ranked Valorant players and they said that 99% of the time your shots are going where they are supposed to go, but of course situations where shots are not registering also happen but mostly because of unstable internet connection or high ping. Valorant community never seems to complain about bad tick rate or poor shot registration. And what about CS2? Sub tick is nowhere near to be perfect and even simple said that it feels like 16 tick rate. So all this going beyond tick rate statement needs a lot of work done. I really hope and believe that CS2 will be able to work the main sub tick issues, but for now the point goes to Valorant. If you are tired of getting sh skins from CSGO cases, you should check out Skin Club. Skin Club is one of the most famous case opening platforms with more than 100 cases to open and it has a probably fair system which guarantees fair chances for all of the players. On Skin Club you can open daily free cases and the more you play, the more cases you can open. Also, you can try your luck on upgrade mode or doing case battles against other people. Skin Club is currently doing an event where for opening cases you can get special currency and this currency you can exchange into skins or cases in the marketplace. Skin Club supports all available deposit methods and only for my viewers by using my link in the description you will get a 7% deposit bonus. So make sure to check out Skin Club and thanks a lot for watching the ad. Number 2. Anti-cheat. And oh, this is gonna be a tough one. Having a poor anti-cheat have always been my number one claim to Valve. I've always said that if they want to make a good game, the number one thing that they have to work on has to be the AC. Otherwise, all the high tier ranks will be filled with hackers and HVH lobbies, and this is what people are experiencing in high ELO Premier games right now. He's one item. I've already seen a plenty of videos like Road to 30,000 ELO rating with cheats in Premiere and you can watch those videos yourself, I'm not gonna promote those scumbags on my channel, but the point is that you can literally buy a $5 cheat and use it without getting banned in Premiere, VAC Live is just simply not there. Meanwhile, Riot has its own anti-cheat, which is actually a program on your PC, just like the Faceit anti-cheat, but in Valorant it is much better. If you meet a cheater, he will be banned in the next game with 99% chance. And the thing is, there are not a lot of cheaters in general. The people who I asked claimed to meet only 2 or 3 cheaters in their recent 500 to 600 matches and they got instantly banned after getting few reports. So you can play matchmaking and not worry that someone is cheating in the enemy team. There is actually a really small amount of cheaters in Valorant as their AC works very good and it never bans someone who is not cheating. There is also a bad side about Riot Anti-Cheat since it has access to all your files in your computer, but I will be gladly giving access to my 78 terabytes of Fury porn if Valve even came close to creating an anti-cheat like that, if that actually helped clearing the community from cheaters. So point goes to Valorant. Now let's talk community and especially toxicity. As one of the friendliest CS2 content creators, I think that it's great when the game is punishing people for toxicity, racism and other offensive stuff. I sometimes talk a lot of trash, now actually I talk a lot of trash to people and in the past 3-4 to four years I only remember getting banned 2 or 3 times and the bans were really short. In CS you have to be toxic for 4-5 or five games in a row to receive a ban. Valorant community, especially in higher ranks, is pretty friendly compared to CS and you might ask why. The thing is, if a person is being toxic, he will be 
be banned from playing competitive matches first time for one day, then three days, then seven days, then eleven days, and etc. until he gets a permanent ban. That is one of the reasons why Valorant community is friendlier in general, and it's also the reason why people restrain themselves from talking trash and being toxic even if they want to since they don't want to get banned. If they get banned, there are no alternatives of playing. If I get banned in Premiere, I might just go play Face It, ECA or ES Portal, but in Valorant there are no options, so you will think twice before calling someone's mother a whore. The other reason is that in higher ranks you lose more ELO than you win. For example, in Top Radiant Lobby, the highest rank in Valorant, you will lose 20 to 25 ELO and win only 10 to 15. That is why everyone is trying to win the game. The point goes to Valorant again. Number 4. Ranking System Valve divided Premier matchmaking, which is supposed to be more competitive, from regular matchmaking and now we have a rank for each map. And with Premier we understand the ELO system, but still a lot of people think that those rank up games are kinda unnecessary. But what is this new matchmaking system for each map? Why does everyone has to start from Silver or Gold Nova? Why does Onapixel has the same rank as Doc? Doc dreams to be half of the player Onapixel is on Vertigo, but the system still plays them in the same rank and no one knows how it works. In Valorant the ranking system is very simple and understandable. Each rank has 0 to 100 scale of ELO. When you get 100, you get a promotion to a higher rank. If you lose a game when you're at 0 points, you basically rank down. And as I said, everyone is tryharding in high ELO because you lose more points than you win. Also starting from Immortal, you can't trio queue anymore, you can only queue as a duo or as 5 stack. If you queue as a 5 stack, you will only play against a 5 stack. And then when you win a game as a 5 stack, you get less ELO than in solo queue. So you actually can't abuse the system by playing a lot of 5 stack games. Another point goes to Valorant. Now we're gonna talk about movement. In CS2 there are counter strafes, crouch picks and much more interesting mechanics. In Valorant there are no counter strafes at all and crouch picks are not as OP as in CS2. The movement feels smoother and easier to control, that's why it's much easier for a beginner Valorant player to learn the game and the mechanics. So Valorant is a noob friendly game when it comes to movement, but when you change from CS to Valorant you experience some difficulties as it is hard for you to trick your muscle memory to stop counter strafing, checking corners and picking like in CS. Also, there is kind of like a meme in Valorant community called a popping swing. Just take a quick look at it, but if you're a CS player, I promise you it's gonna be very painful for you to watch. For more interesting and complicated game mechanics, the point obviously goes to CS. Number 6. The meta. Even though we have some new smoke mechanics, removed skyboxes and nading the smoke mechanic in CS2, the meta still remains kind of the same. On Mirage you still need to fight for mid control by smoking insta window, on Ancient you need to take cave heaven and mid as a CT, and on Inferno you have to fight for banana etc etc. The meta still stays the same, it's just that the nade lineups are getting a bit different. And hear me out, Valve have only been removing maps from the official map pool of CS. Train is gone, Dust 2 is gone, Cobblestone is gone, Cash is gone. What did we get? Anubis? I mean, it's a pretty good map and the community likes it, but it's just one map in so many years of esports scene. The meta remains the same and only slight adjustments are being made. While in Valorant the meta is always changing, every single agent has its own unique abilities and skills which can be used in various situations. You can use smokes for defense and flashes for offense, or you can use smokes for offense combined with flashes. There are stuns, mollies, nades, healing and this makes the game very unique and unpredictable. Riot always updates maps, agents and their abilities. And even though I hate the shitty abilities and characters flying in the air, reviving dead players and literal legal wall hack, I still think that Valve could make a better job by either adding some new game mechanics or at least reworking the removed maps or even adding some new ones. Unfortunately, the point goes to Valorant. Now let's talk skins baby. I have zero skins knowledge but even I know that probably more than half of CS community is in the game because of skins, trading, selling, collecting, buying and other skin related stuff. Valorant skins are dog shit trash garbage looking pixels that are worth nothing and never will be worth anything. While in CS2 you have 5-7 pussy pattern and huntsman knife dick pattern and I know that a lot of traders and buyers are making a living out of skins in this game so instantly point goes to CS if you argue I will fucking nuke your country. Now let's talk community servers and in Valorant there are none, zero. 
not all the people who play CS2 play the game for competitive 5 versus 5. There are serve servers, hide and seek, bunny hop, KZ, and even HVH, which I don't really support, but still, they exist. There is even a bunny hop world cup in CS. People are not even playing CS itself, but that's what it makes it fun. It makes more people interested in the game and brings more audience. And even though community servers and workshop maps are currently in the process of being added back into the game, it's just a matter of time. So no discussion, the point goes to CS. Number 9. Let's talk esports. In CS2 there are a lot of tournament hosts such as Blast, ESL, Faceit and others. They are strictly controlled by Valve. Valorant hosts its own tournaments with their own streams, activities and rules. They also allow streamers to watch the game and stream it on their own channel. So if you enjoy for example Tarek's casting, you can watch him instead of official casters. This makes watching games much more interesting and exciting. But Hayex, Onypixel is casting games all the time. Well, I mean, yes of course, you're allowed to co-stream CS tournaments after asking all those hosts a permission and receiving rights to co-stream. But the problem is that you need to have a pretty big name in the community to do that, so unless you're averaging around 500 on Twitch, preferably even more, you have zero chance of getting those rights, trust me, I have tried. Points to Valorant, their approach is better. Next important detail about those games is individual and team statistics. To check your individual performance, mistakes and other important game stats in CS2, you need to use some sites that I'm not sponsored by. For those who enjoy jerking off to their statistics, Valorant is partnered with Tracker.gg. This website allows you to watch your full statistics on every single agent and every single map, and this is not an ad. You can learn new lineups, tactics and much more using only this site. They also have an app which works with Overwolf, it shows your teammates and your personal stats middle of the game, and it's not bannable at all, so you don't need any Faceit Enhancer or other programs or plugins in your browser. Points to Valorant. Number 11. The guns. Did someone say guns? Holy shit, I love America. In CS2 you have guns that are CT and T sided, like AK and M4 and Tech 9 and 5.7, while in Valorant you have the same guns available both sides offense and defense, so there is no such thing as saving AK as a CT. Every gun is pretty balanced and can be countered by agents and their utility, but opening in Valorant is kind of more difficult, especially flicking with operator. You need to get used to it according to people I asked. In my opinion, having sided weapons brings more interest and strategy into economy, so I'd say that I wanna give a point to CS, but I'm not going to. Also, as far as I understand, there are no consistent spray patterns in Valorant, so that's a huge L in my opinion. I'll leave this one to you. Number 12. The graphics and optimization. CS2 is currently poorly optimized, and developers seem to add lots of weekly updates about the performance of the game, but we're still nowhere near to be perfect. In Valorant the graphics are super simplified, and even on low and mid-end computers, the game seems to work with decent amount of FPS, which is good, but I know that there is a pretty popular opinion that Valorant graphics are cartoonish, childish piece of garbage, and some people don't even want to try the game, since they don't like the way the game looks. I agree with that, the game looks like shit. Points to CS for graphics, and points to Valorant for good optimization. The final conclusion. Valorant is a noob-friendly, childish game with developers who listen and care a lot about the community. I understand why Valorant has its own player base and why this player base is so huge. Counter-Strike 2 is a legendary game that recently has made a huge step by upgrading the engine, which involved a lot of bugs and hate. The release of CS2 was way too rushed in my opinion, but we have what we have. Valve never listens to the community and always does things the way they like it, which upsets a lot of people. On paper, Valorant seems to be a better game right now, but I believe in the bright future of Counter-Strike. And I would never touch this gay cartoon f as bitch as trash as fucking anime piece of shit. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you agree.